So, do you understand what is Chrome OS? Do you understand the power of what this operating system can do for you? My name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. And today I want to take an overview of Chrome OS and how it runs on a Chromebook and what it can do for you. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so let's start with the basics. Chrome OS is from Google. It's free and it's open source. It's based on the Linux uh, kernel. And on top of that, Google have built on some other stuff, primarily the Chrome web browser, so that when you fire up your Chromebook in Chrome OS, you basically get the Chrome web browser that gives you instant access to uh, all of your sort of services, including Gmail and so on on the internet. So just worth mentioning at this point, this is one in a series of videos I'm going to do about Chrome OS. I've got this overview. I also want to review the Chromebook that I use to make these videos. I'm then going to do a special video just about running Android apps on Chrome OS, and then another video on how you run Linux apps on Chrome OS. Now there are lots of advantages of Chrome OS uh, as opposed to, for example, a Windows laptop or, for example, a MacBook. And they include the fact that it's free and open source. There's also, it's very, very quick to boot. It gets you straight into the Chrome web browser very, very quickly. You don't have to worry about viruses, like Windows type viruses, because they're not going to affect your system. If you go to a website that has malware infected on it, of course, Chrome will warn you about that. But then even if you do go there, the chances of it actually doing some harm to your computer are vastly reduced. It's also very easy to use. If you know how to use a web browser, if you know how to use Chrome on any uh, platform, then you're basically going to feel really at home in Chrome OS. It runs on Intel-powered Chromebooks, also runs on ARM-powered Chromebooks. It's updated very frequently, and all that happens is when you reboot the machine, it just kind of reboots into the newest version. There's none of this updating, and you have to wait 15%, 20%. It's, all, it's just it's really quick at updating. One thing I'd just like to ask you at this point is please, if you do enjoy this video at the end, please do give it a thumbs up. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel as we're trying to build up the community here at Gary Explains. Okay, let's go on. So those are all of the advantages. Now, what are the disadvantages? Well, the main disadvantage is if you're used to running programs on Windows and you need programs that run on Windows or even programs that run on Mac OS, let's say, for example, uh, Adobe Premiere Pro, then you're not going to be able to install that on a Chrome OS laptop. You're going to need to stick to Windows or to Mac OS. And the same is also true if you're used to doing lots of gaming, for example, use a service like Steam and you want to install the latest sort of first person shooter, you're not going to be able to do that on a Chrome OS laptop. Well, if you can't run these Windows programs and you can't play games, then what can you do? Well, of course, this is the whole point. A lot of what we do today, maybe 90% of what we do today is actually based around the internet itself. And if me personally, email, Gmail. When I write documents, I do it in Google Docs. If I do a spreadsheet, it's in Google Spreadsheet. Photos, get uploaded to Google Photos. And the list just goes on and on and on. You know, uh, movies, we're talking Netflix, we're talking music streaming, we're talking uh, Spotify or Google Play Music. Everything, mainly everything I do is based around the internet and the services that I can get from the internet. And so if you are consuming media, YouTube, you know, or you've got a Plex server at home, or as I said, you're running streaming music, you can just use a Chromebook. And then of course there's social media, Twitter and sort of Facebook. You can do all that from within inside your web browser and you don't install a kind of a dedicated client most of the time on your kind of your Windows uh, laptop. You just do it from inside your web browser. The beauty of Chrome OS is it's not just based on what you can get over a web page. You can install Chrome extensions, which will give you lots and lots of different things, including some offline stuff that you don't need to be connected to the internet, and they'll just work inside of the browser. You can even get some gaming in there. Don't worry, you can still play Solitaire even on a Chrome OS laptop. There are other features built natively into Chrome OS. For example, there's a file manager, so you can get access to your documents and to your media. You can do things like connect to a VPN, so you can connect privately to the internet. There's Bluetooth support and so on. And there are some really amazing Chrome extensions out there. It's actually worth going to the Chrome web store and seeing what's there. I was amazed to find you can find VNC, you connect to VNC remote desktops, you can connect to Windows remote desktops, you can even do secure shell connections to remote servers and all this from inside your web browser. And then of course, on top of that, as I've mentioned, you've also got Android support and Linux app support. 
Now, personally, I really do love the idea of Chrome OS. I have three Chromebooks here in the house. If someone in my family wants to quickly do something like watch a YouTube video and they can't maybe on the main computer, I'll just quickly give them a Chromebook, go and watch it on that, and it just works great. They're not worrying about viruses. I'm not worrying about how long it took to start up. I'm not worried about some weird configurations and blue screens of death. It just works. Here, I'll take that, go and watch the, uh, the YouTube video you want to watch. It's really hassle-free. In fact, I've never had a single problem with my Chromebooks that uh, possibly a reboot didn't fix if there was anything, but I've never had to be going around in the registry or, you know, kind of installing drivers or any of this nonsense. It just works and gives you access to the internet in a nice laptop format. So is a Chromebook the right thing for you? Well, if you spend most of your time doing stuff on the internet, then I would definitely say yes. It's certainly a good secondary device or a good portable device for when you have to go away on a business trip or away from your office for a little while. If you're heavily into Microsoft specific apps or Mac OS specific apps, let's say like you know uh, Adobe uh, Photoshop or something like that, then this isn't going to be the platform for you. However, as you'll see in the video coming up about Android and about Linux, there's actually a lot you can do on a Chromebook natively. For example, using uh, Android apps, you'll be able to edit photos, you'll be able to edit video. Using Linux, you for example, can run LibreOffice, you can do programming. There's a whole bunch of things that you can do. So the value proposition of Chrome OS is powerful, particularly when you add Android apps and Linux apps into that mix. Okay, that's about it. My name is Gary Sims. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.